Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me, Umber Rays, and today we're going to be talking about gacha games again. I already did one video where I have talked about the gacha games that I've been playing recently, but some people have been commenting, asking me certain questions, so I thought I'd talk a little bit more about a couple of gacha games, and specifically one that I talked about last time, but really didn't go into too much depth, and I think deserves maybe a little more depth than I have given it. So... For, uh, excuse the layout, this is something that I'm kind of just throwing together and I'm super busy right now preparing to go to JP Fan Festa as well as just a whole bunch of other things in my normal life, so forgive this video for not being super good. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's talk about those games that I did not talk about last time in the gotcha video, which is, first of all, Star Ocean. Star Ocean on the cell phone? I played it. I did play it for a little bit. Uh, I thought it was okay. I didn't think it was super exciting. It didn't really run great on my phone back in the day, which didn't super interest me. But the other thing is I found it horribly repetitive for the short battles, and at the time there just wasn't that many enemy types. So yeah, it just didn't really click with me, and I passed on it very easily and moved on to the next thing. Uh, next up, Fire Emblem Heroes. I actually I am a pretty big fan of Fire Emblem, so much so that I have a, a limited time, a limited time a Japanese edition of Fire Emblem Fates. I was a big fan of Fire Emblem Sacred Stones, that's one of the first games I ever got to play. And um, I played a lot of the other games. I enjoyed them a lot. I really enjoyed, you know, uh, Fates or If. Uh, as well as Awakening, so that makes me a bad Fire Emblem person. That's okay. I don't really want to be part of the community because I'm not super happy. I was never super happy with uh, the way Fire Emblem was as a gotcha game, and I just didn't enjoy it that much, so I passed on it. I tried it a couple of times, but it's just very not my game. Uh, next up, uh, Mobius. I did try Mobius for a little bit, but uh, again, I got really bored and just turned it off after a while. I also did have a brief stint with Record Keeper, but I'm not a big fan of the 8-bit. I think it's cute, but uh, just, just really not my thing. I just don't gravitate super well to the old, uh, what are they called? Um, to the old, uh, to, the, to the really old graphics. Like, I, I appreciate retro games, but just not that much, and it's not something I want to be around. I kind of like Brave Exvius's Super NES kind of graphics, sort of, uh, of Brave Exvius, but, um, so yeah, there's that game. And the City Opera Omnia, I did try it for a while. Uh, I wasn't very good at it. I didn't enjoy how difficult the story got, and I thought that was a major hurdle to playing the game. I also didn't find uh, uh, the grind really that fun, and I'm just not a big a fan of weapon gotchas. I'm just not... Um, there isn't really a good way I can justify it. I just don't really like it that much. And the EX weapons that came in Opera Omnia uh, definitely felt bad because all of a sudden it felt like my characters just couldn't do what they, were, they could. And that felt really bad to me because of abilities and whatnot. So, yeah, that is basically some other gacha games that I have tried at some point in time. And yeah, for one reason or another, I've kind of passed on a lot of them. But Epic Seven is a game that last time I did talk about, and, well, I didn't really get a chance to really show off that much, because that really wasn't what the video was about. All right, uh, we will go on the global server, because why not? But uh, Epic Seven is a really well-crafted, in terms of depth, phone game. I have to admit, out of a lot of JRPGs that I have played over the course of my life, uh, this one is one that um, I really quite like. And I'm actually going to just upsize this. And downsize me. I'm going to be blocking a little bit, but it's okay. I, I kind of want to show this game off a little bit. First of all, the anime style of graphics are beautiful, and I hope there is some music. It might be a little loud. But um, it runs a little smoother on phones, obviously emulators, you know, 
have a little bit of problems, but in terms of getting this to run as opposed to Dragalia Lost, uh, LD player is working pretty damn good. So basically it is a turn-based RPG with, you know, uh, kind of different class and role characters. Each a character has like three different abilities that they can use in a fight uh, based on what I've seen so far in the game. There might be more depth later, and like most gotchas, there are three star characters, four star characters, and five star characters. So, leading into the game, this is kind of what you uh, start off. Come on, let's go. So, you basically get this tutorial with super OP powered characters. We're going to skip through a lot of the story because if you really want to, uh, this. Um, I don't think that I actually got a good opportunity to show this off the last time or talk about it really that much. But um, getting through the... If you're going to read everything and whatnot, uh, it is pretty time-consuming to get through to the point where you get to reroll. I mean, I'm not saying it's like, oh, you have to spend 60 hours or anything. But it is definitely a fair amount of time to get there as you have to go through this every time. And there is an ability to skip some of the tutorialization, but you still essentially have to go through it. Which is one of the reasons why I don't think this game is like, oh, it's a re-roller's dream. I, I, I just don't see that as the actual case. Uh, because really... Uh, you do have to spend a fair amount of time getting to the point where you can re-roll. Or at least the important part of the re-rolling happens. So yes, the, a lot of these anime cut these anime cutscenes aren't skippable. <coughs> Most of the story stuff uh, is. Um, and getting right into it. Oh, we're getting a little bit of lag. Probably because I am running something in the background right now. But it's not just that. If you take a look here, we can even show off. Four star characters as well as five star characters have very, very flashy limit bursts. Uh, so much so that, you know, they're pretty darn cool. Uh, some people have said that, you know, they're not skippable, and I'm not entirely sure. There might be something in the settings that you can turn off battle effects to make the game run smoother. Uh, I can't do it right now, because of course, of course not. We're still in the tutorial. They haven't tutorialized us on how to do that. But yeah, uh, speaking of the game itself, uh, I think one of the... Oh, yes, we have summons too. Which... Again, pretty damn cool to look at. Really reminds me of Golden Sun's uh, summon animations. Very, very nice animation style. I, I really do enjoy the, a lot of the distinct style of this game. The other thing I will say is that there is a very clear, like, style to this. It's kind of like goth anime a little bit with, like, a little bit of Cthulhu inspiration and whatnot. And, you know, for what they've done, they built quite a epic little, uh, intro world to just go around in. And shit goes wrong. But the, the, the game itself, to me, hmm, my cup tastes a little like soap. That can't be good. But uh, the game itself has a lot of quality marks to it, particularly, uh, you know, voice, lots of voice work to uh, for each of the characters. 
Uh, and and that, that does scream just a lot of effort was put into making this game super high quality. But again, uh, some of the issues I have, uh, the story is definitely a little weird, uh, wordy, and I would go even so far as to say uh, a major problem that I kind of have with the game is that it does have a lot of depth, I would say. Uh, some of the uh, controls also aren't as tight as I would like them. Uh, you know, when you do something in Brave Axe, it's most like it feels pretty good and responsive, and sometimes the uh, I have found that playing this on my phone, it just doesn't respond quite the way you want. So it works pretty much like the way, you know, if you're familiar with Brave Exvius or a lot of other gacha games, you have the friend system where you can use a friend's character to help you get through something that might be more difficult or something that's more easy. It does have its own story, and yes, uh, Brave Exvius people, I guess you could compare. Hey, we even got a version of Laswell, so it makes you feel right at home, right? If they won't get out of the way, we'll has a lot of the same features that you would expect to see auto, uh, uh, auto battle, although that opens up later. And if you are interested in skipping the tutorial, all you have to do is wait 10 seconds and it will pop up. And again, you skip through it and just are able to play the game by yourself but it doesn't actually advance you, which is kind of unfortunate. And this is one of the things that I think was a big disconnect for me was... Now oh, we're taking so little damage. All right. Shall we clean up? But uh, while I do appreciate a lot of the quality work that has been put into the building of this game, there are some things that I'm just not a super big fan of. Uh, the voice work in English kind of feels a little mismatchy to the characters to me. Um, again, I think the game's smoothness has a little bit of issues, and that's not talking about the way it performs on an emulator. Obviously, emulators have their issues. Sometimes you just need a more powerful rig to be pushing out these games to be running as smoothly in hell. Even Brave Exvius doesn't run that smooth. And love. Ah, let's go to the. <sighs> Just gotta wait for it. And this is the other thing. Uh, for being able to skip the tutorials, it also is pretty slow to give you the uh, skip option. All right, let's just head to the next stage, shall we? Here we will be taking a different character with us. These are NPCs to help you start the game. And, yeah, the, the summoning thing, uh, I'm not entirely sure what is going on, whether they ha have definitively figured out how they are going to change the summoning system in this game. But yeah, the summoning system does require a some changes, to say the least. Uh, mainly because right now the summoning system just kind of... it doesn't. There's no pity system. The rates are higher for what are called epithets, I believe. Or if you're a Dragalia Lost person, basically worm prints. Uh, which doesn't feel super good. Can I go into settings? Excellent. I can show off settings now. So you can actually have a low quality mode, which will make it easier to run on your game. And if we go, uh, where is it? Ooh, disable summon notices. You do have the options as well to just... I can't do that now, but you can switch the language if you're not a fan of the English voice work or you're not a fan of Japanese or the Korean voice work. You have the choice to choosing what you want. Oh, another treasure chest. Ooh, darn it. I'm going to do this one for YouTube and it's actually going to turn out to be a pretty decent account. So if you're curious about, uh, you know, Dragalia uh, Lost, it, like that's a game that at this point 
I've kind of like, I, I've definitely slowed down in the amount of time that I'm spending in that game. Epic Seven is a game that I've been, you know, experimenting with to see, you know, it's still in its early days, so you can still get some early bonuses for playing it. Click that, get some soul, and I'll show you what soul does in a second here. By the way, Isaria, uh, Rabio, or Ravi, I think, and uh, Destina are probably some of my more favorite characters. The game is tutorializing me. We don't want that. Go. I don't want to burn. I actually want to show off her animation because it's really cool. So yeah, you can get an idea for what the animation is like, but you can also use what is called uh, basically your soul here, your burn, to just do some extra damage. Makes it look your, your attack look cooler, I think, too. And bam, you can even get your other allies depending on how, I think it is the relationship between the characters works. Uh, you can even get them to cooperate. There's a lot of different like under level underlying mechanics in this game. There's status effects, like there's stuff that you would expect, like status effects, I should say, uh, from, um, you know, normal JRPGs. But you also get into a lot of other stuff like equipment, equipment boosting, equipment fusing, uh, connections, which is a system that allows you to get certain characters that the game has allowed. So give it a second. I just, I don't, like, this is one of the things that I'm not super crazy about is the tutorialization taking so long to just give you the skip button. Just give me the skip button faster, man. Take that. Hit there. And the other thing is that uh, for some of the characters, this game is definitely... First time I heard that voice, I thought it was a girl. I just didn't read the thing that said that he is a prince. And I was like... Oh, it's a girl. Okay, it's a princess. Seems okay. And then I found out later. Oh, okay. Whatever you say, game. Well, we'll add him to our party, but we're not going to boost him at all. No, no, no. That is not how we do it. So one more quick adventure and we'll pretty much kind of just be able to show off the summon system. This is when you really got to weigh out uh, whether the tutorial is longer than waiting for the skip button and if you can just click through it faster. All right, let's go. We will take an NPC with us to basically make this easy mode. So as you go through the opening 10 stages, that allows you to get to your free 30 multipoles. Now, the multipole system, again, is pretty darn nice if you've ever been re-rolling and you just hate having to just go back and forth. This one does give you 30 multipoles in a row where you have to just kind of basically weigh out, you know, what you got, if it's worth um, keeping or trying and risking to get rid of it. But uh, the system also takes a while to get back there. And the 30 multiples in a row will very clue you into how bad the rates are in this game. If they won't get out of the way, we'll cut our way through. Not who I clicked on, but okay game. We're, we're still going to get there all the same. I'll take you on. Maybe. Skip. Don't need the health. And so explorations can be a little bit different. Uh, fighting the enemies are pretty much set in stone. But this game is, and this is the part that I just did not get to the last time. Uh, the This game is incredibly grindy. This is for a person who is like, 
I don't know, maybe you played World of Warcraft back in the day where you really enjoyed having that massive grind to do, and that's what this game has in spades, it feels like. There is a ton of grind in this game. No, well, let's just use our single attack. Not even to the point of, like, just trying to find items, but in some instances, trying to actually uh, go further in the story... That, that is debatable game. I, I just ranked up. I did not become stronger. So many pop-ups. So many pop-ups. So many pop-ups. I think that... Wait, was that 1-1 one, one or 1-2 one, or 1-3? This is one of those ones where it's just faster to go through it. Also, it's very nice that I get pop-ups telling me how much everybody has gotten. Isn't that nice? Just to make you want to pull more. Like, there's a lot of stuff here that's pretty standard. Well, we're going to do this. Sample 01. Hey, it's free. Cool. Uh, there, There's a lot of stuff here that's just familiar uh, territory for anybody who's played a gotcha game before. There's really nothing that is like uh, something that you haven't seen or something that's very different. This game is very much, you know, that kind of gotcha game feel. Skip, please. And in terms of re-rolling, some of the characters that you should probably look for, Ravi, Sez, Destina, are all great five-star characters where if you're looking for, you know, this game does have the good advantage of having a lot of good three and four stars. There are some really top tier characters, even in the lower ranks, that are per se easier to get. Now, the reason I say per se is, again, because uh, in this game, the rates are charitably what some people would call pretty damn bad. Uh, kind of remind. While, you know, in multipole, in the your 30 instant multipole, you'll see a fair amount of five stars. Six, two thirds of the time, they will end up being essentially not characters, which uh, is definitely been my experience so far. It is pretty rough when you are just trying to reroll for the character you want. And not to mention that there are certain characters that are removed from the multipole. But I guess if you were looking to, you know, pick up and play this game, uh, it is definitely great for anybody who loves a turn-based RPG-style game, you know, with the gotcha characters that is a little easier to get characters if you're willing to put the work into it. Nope, we don't want to hear that. There is Elemental Resistance, kind of the same thing if you played Dragalia Lost. It's essentially really, really the same thing. All right, well, let's just burn this and get some damage in on this wolf. Okay, Laswell. Rawr. I'll take you off. Need to do my best. Well, let's try a summon out to show what these are like. Yes, yes we shall. There's those status effects I was talking about. But yeah, if you're looking for a game that is uh, much more numerical, uh, this feels pretty darn numerical and in depth when it comes to building characters as you also have to build equipment uh, you have to manage money you have to build certain things in the game to help you out it's kind of got just a t well really it just has a ton of features 
Those victory quotes. There is definitely a reason why I still play this game without sound on. Confirm, 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 skip. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff to click through. So now we can show this off, basically. Maybe. Come on, give me that nice skip button. There we go. So in here, we can take a look at the rate. So your drop rate for a five-star hero is 1.25%. Four-star is a 4.5%. Uh, three-star hero is a 41%. Now, if you look over at the three-star artifacts, those are 45%, so you have a better chance of getting a three-star artifact. You have a uh, about 6.5% chance of getting a four-star artifact, and for a five-star artifact, a 1.75%. So yeah, it's roughly about, you know, it is definitely higher onto the artifact, and I'm still not convinced that this rate feels exactly right, because most of the time that I've been doing it, I've seen two-thirds of it end up being an artifact. I know that's not how that works, but let's show off some summons. Well, we got a covenant, so, so that's good news. We can kind of show this off. Let's see who... Oh, I guess it's guaranteed to be a character, the first one. The Alexa, one of the characters you can actually just get straight from uh, uh, doing... The more heroes you meet, the more enjoyment you will gain. Yep, the more heroes you do get, the more enjoyment you will gain, while the more... Uh, I know they're like epicets or something along those lines, but if you the more you're the more you don't get what you want, the worse it feels, man. Feels bad, man. So let's just grab these, grab these, grab these. Then we'll just try try and do some summons. I guess I should be doing it on the uh Celsa. But when you see that animation, basically you are guaranteed a three star. Hey, there it is! Uh, artifacts. That's what they're called. Sure, people have been screaming in the comment section for at least a couple of minutes. Skip it. Honestly, this is one of those things that just feels kind of not so great. It really does feel like worm prints. These artifacts do give really good benefits to your character, so they do feel better than worm prints in Degralia Lost. But, um... That's not to say that they feel good at all. I swear to God, uh, if I keep playing this game, I, as you can see, I just can't really click through this that fast. But um, once I get out and done playing with this game, I swear I will have PTSD about spinning cards. Because every time I see a spinning card in this, I feel it feels bad, man. All right, well, let's see. Oh, we got a hero. Thanks, Pop-Up. Thanks for taking away the fun and surprise. And it's a new hero, too. Dream big. Then you won't feel sorry even if you can't make it, right? I, I guess. Yeah, let's just keep going. Let's see what we get. I'd like to show off the uh, four star because the chances of us getting a five star right now in this video are pretty damn bad. Oh, there's another artifact. Spinning cards, man. I hate them. I fucking hate them. Nope, we got a duplicate because I was able to skip. And you can also buy more Covenant... Basically, you can use the uh, sky stones that you get. Oh, we got a go we got a four star. Okay. Hey, it's not even a four star character. Feels bad, man. Some of these are also very exclusive to certain characters too. So it's not like you can even get uh, that good feeling of getting a useful one if you don't necessarily have that type of character.
Yeah, uh, one of the girls will pop up uh, if you do get a five star. Oh, you, you are, you are, you are bad. You are bad. I do not like him, Sam. I am. I do not like him with green eggs and ham. But anyway, uh, just to talk about this really quickly to finish this up. Um, uh, if a girl appears on the left side, one of the two summoning girls, uh, then you get a basically an artifact. If it, she appears on uh, the other one appears on the right side, then you got a character. So it's kind of nice and reaffirming, but you're not so much, it feels like, going to see that right side girl. Anyway, so that's kind of been a look into Epic 7 and just a little bit of a longer talk about some of the other gotcha games that I have played recently. Um, I do like a lot about Epic 7. I like that it does have some depth to it. The insane grindiness probably needs to be fixed before I can give it too big of a recommendation. But it's pretty, it's pretty well designed. I think a lot of people put a lot of work into the lore of this world and the story and everything. And it's got some nice character design. It's got some really cool characters in it. I just wish the rates did not feel as bad as they do. So anyway, that's all for now. Uh, if you do end up playing it, uh, hopefully uh, you will... Maybe we can join a guild. Maybe we can do all kinds of different stuff. Lots of different stuff, but this video has already been going on too long, so I'll see you next time. Take care.